Hey guys, Leon Sylvester here from HairGuard and today we've got a really interesting video. Today we're going to be looking at the impact that marijuana can potentially have on hair loss. It's a very interesting topic and I'm sure if you're watching this that you are interested in finding out an answer to that question. Don't worry, if you watch the video we do come up with an answer and we're also going to show you some ways to combat it. So what you're going to learn about in this video is you're going to learn about ways that marijuana may cause hormonal changes. Then we're gonna look at the potential for marijuana to slow down cell production. We will look at the potential for marijuana to actually induce stress. And then finally, we have got some fantastic ways for you to combat the potential for marijuana-linked hair loss. So obviously marijuana is a huge topic at the moment. It's also referred to as cannabis and it's an extremely popular recreational drug. Now, not only is it a recreational drug, however, it's starting to find its legal footing in countries such as the USA, Canada, Mexico, Switzerland and Spain. And the list is kind of ever growing. And the reason why so many countries are looking at legalizing marijuana or decriminalizing it is because it is deemed as an effective cure for all sorts of issues such as seizures, pain and cancer. Now, you're probably watching this video because you either are taking it for medicinal reasons or potentially uh, taking it for recreational reasons. But what we want to look at today is we want to look at whether the active chemical in marijuana known as THC has the potential to cause hair loss. So what we need to look at first is how hair loss occurs. Now hormones, they play a vital component of many major bodily functions. Now, if you are prone to androgenetic alopecia or AGA, then hormones play a very, very important part in your hair loss. So the way that alopecia works is that it's caused by sensitivity to something known as dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone, it's produced when 5-alpha reductase, which is an enzyme, attaches to testosterone. So as you can see here, it, it literally is, you've got the testosterone compound there, then the 5-alpha reductase attaches to it, and then it forms um, DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. So why is that important? Because in the majority of individuals with alopecia, uh, they have, it's not that they have an overproduction of testosterone converting into dihydrotestosterone, it's actually that they have normal levels of dihydrotestosterone However, these levels, that it, people that have got alopecia, it triggers a response in sensitive hair follicles, which then lead to hair miniaturization and hair loss. So you can look at a lot of the hair loss treatments out there, and a lot of them aim to reduce the presence of dihydrotestosterone in hair follicles. Makes sense. So when we are looking at marijuana, we actually find out that uh, studies have shown that it is probable that THC, the active chemical in marijuana, alters various neural transmitters in the hypothalamus in the brain. So THC may actually block gonadotropin-releasing hormone, GnRH, which therefore decreases the follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and the luteinizing hormone. So these are two gonadotropins, and they're basically responsible for sending signals for, to the testes to produce testosterone. Now, in theory, this is a positive as less testosterone means less dihydrotestosterone because if there's less testosterone to convert into dihydrotestosterone, that's necessarily a good thing. So when it comes to hair loss, but uh, low testosterone has a variety of negative side effects. So we don't want to, we don't want to lower our testosterone levels to stop hair loss because then we're going to have things like a reduced sex drive, inability to keep an erection, potential for infertility, increased body fat, decreased muscle mass fatigue, anxiety, and depression. So THC is able to change the hormones. And as we can remember, the way that, that, that um, hair loss works, people with alopecia is that it's converting testosterone into dihydrotestosterone. And then people that have got alopecia are sensitive to it. Okay, cannabis can lower testosterone levels, but then we're opening a whole can of worms for even worse negative side effects. Now, in terms of cell production, throughout the cycle of hair growth, the production of new cells plays a key role. In fact, the 
Cell development is a major part of the anagen phase of hair growth, and that's the active phase um, where the hair follicles are growing. Now, there was a study performed in 2007, and that found that endo- and exocannabinoids inhibit growth of the human hair follicle. Now, what are endo- and exocannabinoids? So, throughout the body, we actually have cannabinoid receptors already there, and they're involved in many physiological processes such as appetite, pain sensation, mood and memory the body actually this is very interesting the body produces its own cannabinoids and they're known as endocannabinoids however thc found within marijuana is known as an exocannabinoid and this attaches to the cannabinoid receptors that are already in the body the same way endocannabinoids do now as discovered by researchers the prototypic endocannabinoid aea which may even be pro produced within the human hair follicle and the exocannabinoid, which is the one that's coming from outside of the body, THC, they both inhibit human hair shaft elongation and induce apoptosis-driven hair follicle involution, which is a catagen in vitro. So what that is saying, if, if we look at this here, it actually is saying that um, THC has the potential to move hairs into the catagen phase, which can actually result in hair loss. So you can see the kind of the... the the control group here and how the hair follicle is being shortened there uh, side by side comparison uh, and this here is showing that um, as the AEA was administered more hairs are going into the catagen phase so that's not where we want we don't want more hairs moving further down the phases because anagen phase is the growth phase then we've got the catagen phase and then we've got the hair actually falling out and the process starting again however as administration of AEA, the exocannabinoid increases, so does the percentage of hair follicles actually moving from the anagen to the catagen phase. Now, contrary to popular belief, THC can actually increase cortisol levels, and that's the, hum the hormone produced by the body during stress. Now, everybody thinks that smoking weed relaxes you and chills you out, but the reality is, is that it actually increases cortisol levels. Now, increased cortisol levels can induce a condition known as telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium occurs when the hair follicles enter the telogen phase of the cycle prematurely, thus leading to an excess shedding of hair. Now, the fortunate thing is that many sufferers of telogen effluvium find their condition very short-lived. Uh, however, if the stressor, and in this case, the stressor is THC, is not removed, it can continue indefinitely. So there is a potential for marijuana to induce hair loss. And if you believe that marijuana may be linked to your hair loss, there are a few things that you can do to lessen the issue. So the first thing that we recommend is that you actually decrease marijuana use. Now, some medicinal users, they may be wary of stopping marijuana altogether because they may be taking it for some of the, the reasons recommended by a health professional. However, we still do recommend that it may be beneficial that you decrease marijuana use. Uh, we're not necessarily telling you that you need to stop it. However, if you believe that it is impacting your hair loss, then you know the great thing would be to decrease it. Now, there are benefits to using THC. However, the drug is still an inhalant and inhalants do come with their own negative side effects increasing the risk of cancers and related diseases. Alternatively, you could increase your nutritional intake. So a common side effect of THC is increased appetite, and that's also known as the munchies. And what people do on the munchies is they just go crazy and they binge on sugary and fatty foods. Now, this has the potential for more negative health effects, and not getting the right nutrition can also uh, induce further hair loss. So we recommend combating this by increasing your nutritional intake to ensure your body is getting the right type of vitamins and the right type of minerals. And we recommend foods that are, are healthy, you know, whole foods that are more alkaline as opposed to acid and foods that are rich in vitamins and micronutrients. And finally, we recommend finding the alternative cause. So it's true that marijuana may be the cause of hair loss in some individuals, uh, but you know that's not the only necessary cause of hair loss. 
So one way that you can actually find out the cause of your hair loss is to try something called the elimination diet. So what you do is you cut out the usual suspects for 23 days. So that means cutting out items of food such as egg, gluten, dairy, soy, no fast food, no alcohol for the entirety of 23 days. And then what you do is you start to reintroduce these foods one by one over a 96 hour period. So then you start to take note of how you feel. And if you start to feel sluggish, this could be an autoimmune response to the foods and that can be a trigger to hair loss. And other causes, they may be hormonal. So we do recommend getting blood work done. And yeah, so what we're trying to say is that you, you might not want to give up marijuana entirely. There is evidence to suggest, however, that marijuana may be the cause of hair loss. There may be other causes, um, so it's worth you know working on a variety of different things, looking into different areas, but marijuana may be the cause of your hair loss. So we, what we're basically saying is, is you may wish to consider cutting down marijuana use, seeing if it makes a difference, seeing if, if uh, the hair loss slows down, uh, and then you can take it from there. So thanks a lot, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day.